Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Rawco. I hope you're doing well. Over here, I do Daz 3D videos to help you to get the most out of your own renders. Now, before I get into this video, I just want to give a big shout out to everybody who subscribed to me since I started this channel. Over 5,000 subs now, which is way more than what I expected from, you know, when I first started. So, big thank you to everybody who has. Much appreciated. And to anybody who hasn't, why don't you hit the subscribe button down below and the little notification bell so you don't miss out on other videos in the future. Uh, so big thank you if you have and a big thank you if you're just about to. So in this video we're going to be using DeForce to have it that our model realistically interacts with the environment within which is in uh, so that she sinks down into this duvet that she's actually kneeling on rather than intersecting it that you can see around her knees here uh, so that all the surface indent indentations are in the right place so it looks as if her and the duvet is really in the scene with each other now there are a number of ways within Daz that we can do this we can use the deformer uh, to create the surface indent indentations manually uh, or we can use something like the surface modify which will give some semi pseudo version of it uh, we can even use an external plugin like Mesh Grabber to do the same thing. Uh, but as I mentioned, I'm going to use DeForce in this video because it's a lot simpler and it gives more natural results without too much hard work and without having to get too much practice into to using those other methods to, to, to get good at it. Uh, so if we do take a look at our model here on the bed, uh, as mentioned, she's, she's kind of in you know intersecting with the duvet itself. Other times you might have it where the, the model is almost floating on top uh, of the of a bed or a surface like this uh, and it's not good but also as well if we were to, to just give a click on the blanket for a moment and if Daz catches up on the interface and just turn it off for a moment we can also see that she's floating about eight inches above the surface there because that's where the duvet uh, in the scene is actually situated and positioned so what we're going to do we're going to use deforce and we're going to then apply this uh simulation over uh, an animation over 30 frames and she's going to actually sink down into the duvet now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to apply a surface mod default surface modifier to the blanket the duvet itself so with it selected in the scene i'm going to come over to the simulation tab give that a click and i right click on the tab and come to deforce add deforce modifier right there uh, now the first thing we want to do is just make sure that this duvet settles on the bed correctly without any interference from the model. So I'm just going to turn the model off just for now. And now just making sure that we set up on current frame on our simulation tab, we're just going to do a quick simulation on the duvet and just see what happens to it with it all the base settings that are in place. So I've stopped this earlier because as you can see straight away, it's just completely collapsed. It's completely flattened out into just what appears to be a regular everyday uh, bed sheet or something. If we go back up to simulated settings, right click and then deforce and then clear selected objects, it will put the duvet back as it was. And this is how we want to keep it. We want to keep it all puffy and all fluffed up like this so our model can then sink down onto it. And the way that we can achieve this is by coming across to, again, making sure that we're selected up here, come down to the surface tab and then select the item and then come down to the simulation tab down here. And in here, you see all the settings that we can change to uh, affect and impact the, the simulation on the bed sheet itself. Uh, but we're going to ignore all this. I mean, it's all it all sounds clever and it all sounds good stuff, but I barely use it. I, I don't think I've ever really used any of this. The only thing that we're interested in in this example is this dynamic strength, which you can see here. Now, what dynamic strength is, is it defines how much of the default simul simulation is applied to our surface or our object or our piece of clothing or in this case that the bed duvet when it's set to one it means that the full effect of deforce will will happen upon that that bed sheet if it was set down to zero if we just slid, slid down if we were set down to zero none of the deforce simulation would apply and obviously then percentages therein on the slider so 50 percent only 50 percent of the simulation would impact upon the, the the surface that we're simulating now this is a little bit of experimentation it's a little bit of, of trying different things we don't want to apply the full 100 percent deforce onto our bed cover because we've just seen what happens when we do that uh 
with a little bit of experimentation, I found in this example that I want it to be about 0.75. So we're only going to apply about three quarters of the D4 sim on our blanket. So if we now simulate once more, And I'll stop it there about halfway through. You can see that it's still a bit fluffed up and it's still a bit uh, fluffy and puffed up as, as we want our duvet to be. So that's about right. We want it to be about then 75, 0.75 dynamic strength. And so now when we turn the model back on, we can now set about setting up an animation where what we do is we lower the model onto the duvet over 30 frames on, on the timeline, over 30 frames while we're simulating and then hopefully the two will come together and instead of her intersecting, and if I just turn off that or just reset that D4 sim on the blanket, on the duvet, instead of sim uh, intersecting like what she does here, she will actually push down into the duvet and having only 75% of it of deforce being applied, we'll get real natural indentations in the blanket and everything will hopefully look good. So let's set about setting this up then. So the first thing that we need to do then is come down and open up the timeline down here. And as you can see, therefore, it means we've got 30 frames or 31 frames to be accurate uh, that we're going to run our simulation over. And the first thing that we need to do is to come right the way down to frame zero. And once there, ignore the, the night dress, by the way, I've simulated that separately already. Uh, what we need to do at this point is we need to lift our model up so that she's actually start her starting position is going to be above the duvet if we were to run a simulation like this she's interfere with it straight away because she's already intersecting and you're going to be ending up into the the realms of explosions there so what we're going to do with our model we're just going to raise her up so we need to uh come up to where our model is open her up click on the model and then just raise her up uh to maybe oops minus 35 try that that should be okay. Uh, and then what we need to do is to come back to frame 30, our final frame. Do you remember earlier on when we hid the duvet and she was about eight inches above it? Uh, well, if we take the duvet off again by selecting it and then just switch it off for a moment and then just switch over to my perspective camera, which we can see here. Like we said, mentioned earlier, she's about eight inches or so floating above you know the, the 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 actual mattress and the actual bed if then on this frame 30 we we select her again and maybe i don't know let's say about 57 so she lowers down so now she's only about an inch or so above the mattress and that's important because obviously as she's going to push down into it the the mattress is going to get squeezed below her and she's going to be sitting as close to that mattress as we we possibly can be so if we now come back and switch the blanket back on and this user interface is unbelievably laggy at the moment uh can't wait for das 5 and hopefully it all speeds everything up you can see now that she's really buried into the duvet now that we've lowered it down even further that's good don't worry about it that's good uh now what we need to do is just to tell deforce that we're going to be doing it as an animation and all we need to do is come up to the frames to simulate section there the drop down there give it a click and animated use timeline play range and give that a click so what's going to happen now is the deforce sim is going to start it's going to start at frame zero where we have our model floating above our, du our duvet, and then it's going to progress through all these individual frames, simulating each frame as she gets lower and lower. If I just check on frame 20 here, you can see that she's starting to get lower, and then 25 lower still, until finally at frame 30, she's going to be in the position where we want it to be. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run this animation now. It might take a, a little while to do it, uh, so what I'll do, I'll speed everything up. But what you want to watch now is you just want to watch the duvet and watch the model as she slowly drops into the duvet and pushes into it. And because we're only on 75% uh, dynamic strength, she should sit naturally within the duvet. So what I'll do, I'll set that off now as a sim and I'll speak to you again once it's complete.
Now that the sim has finished and completed, we can see that our model has now sunken into the duvet rather than intersecting the duvet as she was earlier. And in fact, if we turn the model off for a moment and now come back to the perspective view and have a look, we can see the indentations in the uh, the duvet where her knees and her feet and her legs uh, were. Uh, and you can see, as I said, she's sunken into it now rather than intersecting it like she was earlier. And so if we have a look now of the rendered image, and so if we take a look at the scene then after it's been rendered, uh, we can see once again that she seems to be actually sinking into the duvet uh, rather than floating on top of it or cutting into it and intersecting it like it was before we applied the D4 sim to it. It's subtle, but that's all it really needs to be. It just needs to be there if somebody were to look uh, and of course as i mentioned the key to using deforce with these surfaces is that one modifier that we we changed earlier that the dynamic strength in the simulation tab uh, of the surfaces of the of what it is that you're, you you're simming now it might need a little bit of trial and error and you might need to do a little bit of experimentation to get the correct amount that you need for the particular surface that you're working with or for what you know you're trying to achieve in your scene but just changing that one slider can bring about big changes to to any d4 simulation not just these ones with surface indentations uh, now the other mention uh, the other methods that i mentioned earlier deformers smoother modifiers and plugins like mesh grabber and, and the like uh, they're also useful tools to do the same job uh you know exactly the same as what we've done here but they maybe need a little bit more fiddly work and, and you need to be practiced and well versed in the use of those tools to be able to to get the results with deforce it's quick it's simple it's easy and it produces natural realistic results uh when you do it it won't deforce won't work with every surface uh, and those other tools are useful then uh, but that'll be a subject for another video in the future when we get round to doing them uh, but yeah there we go surface indention indentations uh, using deforce it's that easy it's that simple and it's just about changing that one little modifier uh, if you've liked this video and feel that you've got something out of it then please give me a like down below and share it about it'll be much appreciated also again if you haven't already would you please consider subscribing as that'll help me out a real real big time of course uh, any questions any comments just drop them down below and i will get back to you as also as soon as i possibly can thanks for watching thanks for sticking to the end and i'll see you next time bye bye now